Good afternoon and happy Sunday. This is Chef John Ashton and Mrs. Spielberg. And Mrs. Spielberg coming to you live from Happy Days Cottage in Martha's Vineyard off the east coast of North America. I hope you are doing well and have had a lovely week. Uh, this week is a special show because I'm not going to make one of my recipes. I'm not going to be making one of my chef's recipes, one of our team members' recipes. We're making Mrs. Spielberg's eggplant parmesan at long last oh, oh, oh i see that's the way it is eh? at long last um when we um about a month ago we asked uh what you would like to learn and a lot said eggplant parmesan from mrs spielberg so uh it's a delight i have to say it's fabulous but first of all we always start off with a nice slurp so uh mrs spielberg to your eggplant parmesan recipe thank Cheers, you very much everybody Today we're having, a, uh, what are we having today? We're having flowers, Pinot Noir, which is one of my favorites. Mm. I got the recipe dish and the wine pairing today, which was you great. Was, you was going for it, wasn't you? It really was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Mrs. Spielberg, some herbs and some butter. Is it, is it terrible? No, it's back. It's back? Yeah. Okay. Not a problem at all. So we've got some fresh thyme and some butter. We always use Mrs. Spielberg, some Kerrygold butter, uh, so unsalted. I like Kerrygold, or there's another one beginning with P, Pugra. Pugra. Pugra, and I like Cabot as well. They're the, my three favorites. Some well, this, you know, three very common ones. We always use unsalted butter in cooking because every manufacturer, butter manufacturer, has different salt levels. So we have more consistency on our cooking if we use unsalted. And then the salt we use in our kitchens could be superior to the ones what we see in there. Um, when we're always peeling with, with garlic, Mr. Spielberg, always take the end off and give it a bashing and the garlic clove comes out. Let me just show you that again in case you were up there. Um, taking the garlic, this end piece is not digestible, you know, you can see it. So we're just gonna, that's the, the base of it. So we just chop that off. Can you see where I've chopped it off? Yep. To one side, give it a bashing. And that's the easiest way to peel a garlic. We're only infusing the butter. If you like, if you really do like garlic, if you, um, you know, you love garlic, feel free to uh, take the garlic and mince it in your garlic press or on your rasp grater with it. I'm just infusing the butter. So when we infuse this butter, you know, we don't want to get it on a high heat, otherwise it's going to go brown. So I'm just going to put this on maybe number three, a low, medium, a low to medium, heat so I'm going to put this on that wonderful stove which sometimes likes me and sometimes it doesn't um on a, it's going to be on a low so we just let that trickle away just to infuse and we're steeping the flavor in there just like making a cup of tea we can easily grab those out Mrs Spielberg yes. do we have any culinary shows this week uh, we have, a, we have some to to you? I've got it um we got some nice um questions a lot of people are <laughs> were hoping to see me <laughs> behind a good man is an awesome woman so thank you eugene um i think that the deal is that i just need to remain this lady of mystery and intrigue maybe today i'll like show a hand or something P I, I was told I have piano fingers, very long fingers. But maybe we just all have to join each other on a cruise and then you'll get to see me live. Um, I think that's like a fun thing. Um, anyway, getting back to our culinary heroes. Uh, Gerbinder Sadana said that she made the sea bass with potatoes and leeks. It came out great. Yes, I'm listening. Laurel said that she loves Mrs. Spielberg. So thank you, Laurel. You're always so sweet. Yes. Uh, Elizabeth King loved the recipe. She made it uh, the cod recipe, but she made it with halibut, and oh, yeah, yeah. she used squash instead of potatoes. So I thought that was very Fantastic. inventive and cool. Deb Marshall, she enjoyed making the same. Uh, I believe it's the cod recipe, and she likes all the options for adapting the recipes and the kitchen tips. Love that. Deb. Uh, Betty Fisher said she that you are her new favorite chef. How ah. nice. And sea bass is one of her favorites. Uh, Alice Berry made the recipe last week and she thought it was delicious. What nice. um, Anne Gaines, she loves her our uh, afternoons together. Yes. Carolyn Porter made the butternut soup and it was delicious. 
Um, Everly Pearson had some friends over and made the focaccia oh, okay. and the butternut squash soup. And then she finished it off with the sticky toffee pudding. So oh, well done. that's pretty that's awesome. A, that's, a nice, that's a nice menu right there. And the focaccia, you know, as we always say, you know, um, right, using a butternut squash instead of using a potato, whether it's one of my recipes, whether it's... Um, one of the recipes in, in our beautiful book, you know, if you do get a chance to go online, this makes a great present for the holidays. Fabulous book with recipes. Um, it's just not straight jacketing. Uh, you can get this by, go along to crystalcruises.com. Um, if it's your first time joining us, we have a tremendous amount of recipes now. We've been cooking together since, um, I think it's about March or April, so there's a whole catalogue of recipes there as well. But it's not putting them in the straitjacket, it's about the basics, and then you're the Christopher Columbus of your taste. I love it when our guests are our family now, we're a Sunday family, when you get creative and you share your ideas. So well done on the bottom of button of squashing. Sticky toffee pudding, we were asked for a fantastic recipe, one of my all-time favourite cakes from Lancashire, England. Anyhow, Mrs. Spielberg, um, we've, we've today we're making um, your eggplant parmesan. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, let's get cracking. We've got the butter steeping over there, and then what we've got is a, an eggplant. So with eggplants, we've given it a washing and drying and just peel it back, just peeling the top. You know, a lot of people cut a big piece off and they waste it. So I'm going to do this in a couple of ways. I want to show you. I mean, that's not how I would do it. You <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> you asked for it. Oh, sausages! This is your fault. <laughs> you, 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 you started this. Team members here. Um, okay, so I just want to show you a couple of ways you can do it. I'm going to split it in half, Mr. Spielberg. You don't have to do this, and the reason why I'm showing you, I'm showing you two different ways to cut the eggplant. You can cut it like this, so now you've got a flat surface, okay? okay? So that's gonna cut easier. Now we're gonna go about a quarter, quarter of an inch, see, quarter of an inch. Yep. We don't want, if it's too thin, it's gonna it's gonna brown too quickly and it's gonna char, it's not gonna have that meatiness, what we want. You know, remember eggplant, the good thing about eggplant, it's like a sponge, you know, it first came, see, the way it And I just wanna actually stop for a moment and just say, um, for our European audience, our British audience, it's, it's basically aubergine. It's called eggplant, it's a North American word, but eggplant also, they call it that in Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Um, in West Africa, they call it um, garden egg, is the term for mm -hmm. it. Aubergine is the English. Originally, it was from India, although it was in the writings in the 5th century in China as well. Then it went, came across to Europe, to the Greeks and the Italians got it and the French got it. Okay, so we cut it about a quarter of an inch, and it's wonderful because it's like a sponge, you know. It doesn't have any flavour, which sometimes that's a good thing because then you can have so much fun. So there's cutting it that way. If you wanted to do it into rounds, whenever we cut something round, and the reason why I wanted to do this is because it's coming to squash season, and a lot of people will be cutting squash, and when you cut something round, you always want to take a small piece off it. So I'm just going to take a small piece and no longer does that go all I'll over. So, rocking. so awesome. I just wants to show you that piece actually, um, that's gonna be a bit tough for you. As people are asking why when I showed my hand I didn't have my ring on. It's because I was working out on the Peloton before I jumped in the shower. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And and we don't work for Peloton just for the record, We don't work so. for Peloton. Uh, if you just is your first time joining our show, you'll all I don't work for companies. If it's something that we advise, I always <laughs> don't like them people who just pedal. And I I'll use your biking term, pedal you stuff. Very you know, nice. Trying to make a small commission. Here. I also want to apologize. People are saying that the, the video is fuzzy, um, but fuzzy. it's fine on my end, but I can see at the bottom portion that it seems like it's buffering a bit. So apologize. Um, apologies. Yes, it post your messages and then maybe when um, it'll catch up the speed, you never know, you know, with technology. Uh, so I apologize, you know, it's not something from the, the, the Wi-Fi or the Wi-Fi. 
is still working. So it might be something where you've just got to refresh your browser or catch up a little bit. So I do apologize. Um, okay, so you know, you want to, I always find whenever I'm roasting vegetables, I actually line my tray with some foil. And the reason why I do that is if you look at my oven trays, they're always, um, they're always nice and clean. So I always find that using that. Um, I like this one. This is my favorite tray, which is a Cuisine Art AMB 17 BS is this tray. And uh, I don't work for Cuisine Art. I just, I like the tray, it's heavy. And some trays curl up, but I really like this one. The best way to line a tray is put the foil on the inside. You see the way foil mm -hmm. it? Because with foil, when you line it, it always, if you press this side, this side comes up. Place the foil on it and place another tray, and that perfectly lines it. A lot of people, they'll just line it straight with foil, and what happens is if you don't come over the edges, the oil will come around. Yeah. So I find this is the best way. So when we're doing eggplants, you know, eggplants is like, uh, it always reminds me of one of my favorite uncles, my uncle Jimmy. You know, no matter how much booze you put out, you drink it. So eggplants the same, no matter how much oil. You can put this slice in a, a third of a cup of oil and it'll drink the whole lot. So what I like to do is just take the oil and we're just gonna oil the bottom so you can see what oil in the foil. So we got the, so this saves you having to pick the eggplant up and turn it over. Because a lot of people will oil it on one side and then turn it over, so this saves that. And then what we want to do is some salt. Whenever we're putting salt on food, we use kosher salt. The reason why we use kosher salt, it comes out, the large grains come out easy. Yeah. Did you infuse the butter with one or two tablespoons of garlic? Um, I just, or one clove, I sorry. Them. Well, it depends on, remember what we talked about with you, how much garlic you like. I've actually got two in this one. And the reason why, I'm trying to check my bread. Let me just check you up. You're allowed to, okay, this is coming out. It's actually Mrs. Steele. Am I going in? Yeah, come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Right. So let's take a look at, um, I mean, this is going to be the finished one. You want to always bring it out 15 minutes before to let it. So I'm going to come out to Mrs. Spielberg. Actually, you know what? Let's give it another five minutes. I'm going to get a little tiny bit more colour on it, but it's looking good. Whenever we make this, we always want to go about another five minutes on that one. Um, we put, to answer your question, we got two pieces in this one. You don't have to, one piece. It depends how much you like your garlic. It really steep in flavour in there. But if you really love garlic bread, the idea of Do the steep is, again. I like the steep. The steep, just steeping it in there. Yeah. Steep and Very steep, nice. like you know, when you're making a cup of tea. Um, but the reason how this came about when you have eggplant parmesan or you have Italian, you always have garlic bread with it. So, Mrs. Spielberg decided, why don't you put some big bread, garlic bread on the top? Okay, so we brushed the actual foil at this stage. Whenever we season, we use kosher salt, but we season about 10 to 12 inches. So 10 to 12 inches, you can see here, Mrs. Spielberg, mm -hmm. is, and we season uh, from the height. That's the best height to, to shower, to shower with salt and pepper. Now, please, don't use too much salt. People get a little bit too excited with, oh, sausages, pepper. Pepper mill, always, you know, with pepper mill, buy a clear pepper mill. Don't purchase the stuff what's pre-ground. It could have been pre-ground when Nixon was in office or in the when the Beatles were first originating. So you always want to get a good pepper mill and get it see-through. And then we're seasoning the bottom. Um, normally, if this was a piece of fish or a piece of beef or it was something, I would say you could rub this with garlic. There's no, you want that flavor won't come through to this. So now we've got the eggplant seasoned. It's seasoned, it's got oil on it, and we're just adding the eggplant to the tray. You can see we're adding the eggplant. This piece is not, it's gonna to be too tough. There's too much skin on that one, you know. That'll be one of those where you take a bite and like, you know, you uh, I think <laughs> Probably I'll look back as a, an elderly man and I'll say, why did you go? <laughs> <laughs> like the MGM line and such. Um, we're adding the eggplant to here, Mrs. Spielberg. And what we're doing is, the bottom the bottom of this, you'll notice we're cooking the eggplant in the oven. And I always find that this is a mix for a jolly, good, easy cleanup. And the bottom is gonna cause steaming because the bottom is on the tray, that's gonna cause condensation. So now we're just 
brushing it with some Alexa stop brushing it with some oil just brushing it with some oil it doesn't take too much we're just looking to steam this and get a little bit of color and now we've got oil on both sides always remember with eggplant it will oxidize and go brown so you want to make sure you've got good flow your oven's preheated gotta have good flow took 20 minutes before yeah do you, do you did you have good flow when you created this i 100 percent had great you can flow see, look, we're seasoning remember what happens the, it's gonna, the, that flavor's all gonna steep inside. The good thing about eggplant, you know, when you think about it, it's gonna absorb all the flavor. If you've ever been on a, when you go on a crystal cruise and you go to Umi Umi and have that eggplant dish, that mm, means you're eggplant, which is so just good. Now we're gonna go off to the oven with these, Mrs. Spielberg. This was Did you cooked. sweat the eggplant or that's just, just no, sliced just, and in there? Just sliced and straight in there. Oh, I don't think I salted it on this side. Small amount, please, please, please. Don't add too much salt. Remember, we're having Parmesan cheese and we've got Fontina in there. So there's going to be a lot of natural salt. I think people to add too much salt, you can always add it at the dinner table. Um, you know, in the old days, you'd always salt an eggplant because that's when it was bitter. You know, so we don't need to do that. So the eggplant's coming in. I'm going to place it in. As the eggplant's in there, now we'll bring the finished dish out. I'm going to show you how to make it, but I want this to sit for 15 minutes. So here we can see the actual finished dish, but we'll get back to that in a second. I'm just going to place that over here, Mrs. Spielberg. I've placed this on a trivet. You're going to be able to smell this, aren't you? I know what it, it smells like. It's my recipe. Yeah. So here we go. And then what I always say at this point as well, why it's nice and hot, Mrs. Spielberg, let's just turn that off for a second. Why it's nice and hot, what I like to do here is a little bit of Reggiano Parmesan. Mm -hmm. It is eggplant Parmesan. So if you can take a look here, Mrs. Spielberg, um, some Parmesan. And I don't put the Parmesan beforehand. You know, you'll see some recipes where they may have the Parmesan up there. And I don't like to do that because I find Parmesan doesn't um, really like to be dry roasted too much. I think it gets a little bit bitter. So I just add the Parmesan to there. Okay. Wendy wants to know what you think about the, um, uh, what do you think about the silicone brushes? Um, the silicone brushes are good, Wendy. Um, I think with the silicone brushes that they have a tendency, they never seem to give me the same paint as this. Um, I would say, that I want to say, great, Wendy, it's almost like we text before this because um, don't buy a brush with a metal handle. Um, I have one here for dry, when I'm using dry clean, I'm a pasta machine and that. Um, buy one, you can see this one, it has plastic. Mm -hmm. The metal will always rust, you'll wash it and it'll always rust. So I like this one and, I'm, and I don't know who it's from, I will tell you next week. Um, but this one's wonderful, um, so I would highly recommend that one to you. I'm just going to turn my tomato sauce down a bit. Um, I think this this one I just use for dry, because uh, anytime you get that wet, it's always going to rust and metal. Did you add um, olive oil? Uh, olive oil, cleans. we brush the olive oil on the bottom of the pan, and then we brush the olive oil on the top, salt and pepper in there. Okay, so we've got our eggplant in there, we cook it off. We're looking to get a golden brown, and as you can see now, we've got the color. It never looks as nice when it's been sitting at room temperature. You know, it's not gonna have the prettiest presentation. At this stage now, what I'd say is just brush your dish. And the reason why I'm brushing the dish, that small amount of oil can really help with clean up, you know, for when you're cleaning it up. And then we're gonna add some marinara sauce to it. Um, I don't work for this company, but I will say Rayo's is absolutely brilliant. And um, when you do the price analysis of purchasing some Samzano tomatoes, and you actually purchase and you know your onion and your herbs, it's gonna cost you just as much as what it would be with Rayo's. And Rayo's doesn't have um, a lot of um, other ingredients, it's very, um, just the basics of tomatoes, if you look at the list of ingredients. Is that a 9 by 13 inch? Uh, this is a 9 by 13. Please remember, this is just a vehicle. This is just, when I say it's just a vehicle, you can make this into any anything you've got. If you've got a small dish at home, you can make it into that. You can do it any size. You can do it into timbles, which is a small uh, dish, what we use in a cooking kitchen. So 
please feel free to use any. If you've got nine by 13 happy days, if you don't have that, make it in something else. You could use a cheesecake pan holder. You could do, you know, remember you can do uh, use things like that. I'm just going to take the spatula. And I think so, Barbara was asking again about the pans and their Cuisinart uh, uh, the trays. Cuisinart, yeah, that's, um, that's a really good pan. AMB 17 BS, AMB 17 BS. And uh, I don't work for them. I'm just um, telling you what I like, you know. And I, I just find that they don't curl up, you know. Some of the other pans, they have a tendency to curl up, and I don't particularly care for that. So when it comes to actually putting the eggplant on, what we're going to do is, you know, cooking should be fun. It should be like putting your favourite pair of jeans on. It should be cosy. So I'm not really going to uniform it too much. You know, we're cooking at home. If this was on a crystal cruise, everything, as you know, would be so elegant. But at home, you know, I really want you to put on your favorite music and I just want you to get rustic, you know, and it doesn't have to be, um, a, it doesn't have to be too uniformed because when you think about it, when you slice into it, you're not really going to see it, you know? So we're just adding the eggplant to it and just sort of filling the spaces in, you know, just coming along and filling them in, you know? Just moving them around a little bit and filling them in. And then, well, Can um, the leftovers be frozen? Uh, they can. I, I would say with this one, this is actually one where I don't, I never found it superb when it comes to be reheated. Um, I've never found it to be um, at its best quality. Yes, it can, but I, I would say it just never, when you melt cheese, it never seems to reheat as good. It's good in the fridge for a few days, but it never gets to be that where it was, if that makes sense. At this stage, Mr. Spielberg, what we're going to do is add some basil. So we're just going to turn some basil. It's coming to the end of the season here in Martha's Vineyard on the east coast of basil. Our basil plants are starting to say um, cheerio as the garden goes towards its winter slumber. You know, and we're just adding some basil to here. Once again, we don't have to be too uniformed. And then we're going to start to add our cheeses. Fontina cheese, which we think about, melts beautifully, and Fontina's wonderful. It has a nice sort of nutty taste to it. So that's going to be really nice, have a nice nuttiness when we taste that, and creaminess. And then the next cheese we're going to add is going to be some Parmesan. You know, Parmesan, when we think about it, is the king of cheeses. Uh, so we're going to have a small amount of Parmesan to there, and then we're going to add some mozzarella. We know mozzarella, it really isn't a... Fresh fr mozzarella. Fresh mozzarella, yeah. You don't want to, you know, pre-grate, just for the record as well, grated cheese, you always want to grate it. Don't buy grated cheese. A lot of grated cheese has flour on the outside of it, which changes cooking. So you want to actually just grate it yourself. Buy yourself a box grater. Box graters are perfect. The ones that you can get now are really fabulous. And the cheese, what we're adding to add some creaminess is Borzan. Borzan is a creamy herb cheese. And you have all different flavors. I like the old school one. And I'll make, when I'm making bruschetta uh, or any crostini or a, a panini, anything, a sandwich, I will use some of this. Um, I would normally, you know, when you do shows like this, you actually want to, you know, get your hands dirty, you know, because you feel bad because you think, you know, oh gosh, this doesn't look too good on camera, but if you think about it, this is the way we cook. You want to feel it. And um, so now we've got the ingredients. We're gonna have the fresh thyme, some of that fresh thyme. And fresh thyme has this beautiful perfume. It's my favorite herb. It's It gets along with everybody. You know, it's just one of those herbs that gets along with everything. I've never met anything that fresh thyme didn't get along with. And then we've got a layer now, so what we want to do is start adding another layer of eggplant. So we're just building up these layers, rustically doing it, Mrs. Spielberg. Please, you know, when you make this, um, feel free just to relax, have some, uh, put the Louis Armstrong on, think about a crystal cruise and um, just start enjoying yourself, you know, doing it. And roasted eggplant, what I like about this, you know, when we think of um, eggplant parmesan, we think of doing the, 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 the breadcrumbs as well, which is the flour, eggs, breadcrumbs, shallow fried, and that's really heavy. I found that that, that can be just so heavy, and, and a, a piece of that, and you just want to go to sleep, don't you? You want to, you're like Winnie the Pooh after a load of honey. 
you know, you're, you're, you're just so stuffed. Whereas with this one, it's not like that. You know, it's got that nice lightness to it. So we've got a layer, and then we're just going to have a little bit more pepper. You know, feel free to season. And you'll notice again, I'm not adding salt to it. I'm just taking it and having it. And the herbs, I'm just tearing the herbs. If you want to chop them, feel free. Um, we're just adding the fresh basil to it. You, uh, I wouldn't say you want to use dried basil. Some of the tomato sauce is coming in, and we're just having some of that across, and then we're gonna spread that out, the marinara sauce, and just, brilliant, happy days. And then another layer of cheese, and we just keep going, yeah. Could you substitute um, cream cheese for borsan? Uh, you could, um, it's not going to be the same, you know, it's not going to be the same. I would say goat cheese would probably uh, be better. Goat cheese has a, a distinctive flavor, um, so it would be, you know, goat, Goat cheese is going to have like more acidic and more tartness to it, as in the parmesan. Um, so you, you could, yes you could. Um, is it going to be quite the same? No. Uh, but I would say you, you could do that. Feel free. We know this is going to be six six to eight portions, so we're adding the, the cheese to it. And we're just building this layer. Is there supposed to be marinara uh, under the second layer of eggplant? Uh, on, on the bottom we've got the marinara sauce. On this level, we've got the marinara sauce. This is the second level, and then we're going to go to the third, and then we're going to season with a little bit more pepper. So we're just adding a bit more pepper, building the flavour. And as you can see here, it's quite repetitive, but I'm doing it because I want to get towards, you know, the finished. Uh, Seth wanted to know if the um, the mozzarella was homemade. Seth, I had a really busy week. I could not make the homemade mozzarella this week. <laughs> He's a cheeky monster, isn't he? I love it. Well done. Uh, I did. <laughs> we did make the homemade mozzarella we did recently. It for show. What was yeah. the show we did where we did we didn't actually do that live and it's it's for the amount of investment buying the Reddit and doing this stuff. It takes a long time. It takes a while and it's a lot of work for I don't feel I honestly, there are so many good mozzarellas at gourmet grocery stores now that that investment just wasn't, it's not worth, for us it's not worth, when I say for us, as a chef it's great, but for someone at home it's too much work for a small amount of uh, reward. Okay, um, we're going to add some, thank you Seth for your question, uh, we're going to add the fontina is going, we're going to add the fontina, so now we're coming towards the last level. If you've got more eggplants, feel free to do another layer. Are you adding borsan to all the la layers uh, or just yeah, the first so one? Just, as much as you want. Um, you, yeah, I don't know if I added it to the last one. I don't one. think I did. I don't think I did. <laughs> Let's see. It's, <laughs> it's live. You know what? It's not his recipe. It's, so No, no, no. <laughs> Do you know you go going to, what was it last week we forgot to put in some? I don't know, but the viewers reminded. definitely remind well, us. Well, you know, they do, but that's good. That's good. Though. That yeah. means they're paying attention. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll double down on the balls. I'm with this one. All I'm three good. layers should be layered the same way. John is kind of just doing it ad hoc. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm chatting, aren't I, as well? <laughs> you know, when you start chatting, you know, you, uh, you have a tendency to forget something. He I, gets I, an A for effort, though, doesn't he? Pardon? I said you get an A for effort. Uh, an a <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, now we've got the boars and on then, you know, some more. You can add some more. If you want to, you can add a little bit more tomato sauce. It's not really, it's just something where you have some fun, you know, it shouldn't be too serious. Uh, we add some more uh, herbs to it. We say herbs, we use the letter H in it. So I just like herbs. We, we just, you use, you I had a grandpa it, herb. You know, yeah, um, so we've got the herbs in there, we've got the, and then we've got the parmesan is going in there. People uh, are noticing that you're not dancing as much. Is that because it's not your recipe? <laughs> <laughs> are you I'm nervous? Are you nervous? <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. People think that my, res my dish actually might taste better, but that's because I do the layering properly. Oh, by Jove. <laughs> by Jove. <laughs> My goodness, I'm going to stretch out the word please. <laughs> okay, listen, have fun. Oh, That's there you go, there you go. 
I don't know if this is a good dance move, but that's still good. Yeah. Oh my gosh, by Joe. <laughs> Wendy, it does look like mine, so that's good. You've um, done a good job. Um, so the fresh thyme. Uh, if you don't have fresh thyme, don't worry about it. Don't use dry. Dry thyme. I, mean, I don't like dry thyme. I've never found it. And we'd use it sometimes in Jamaican cooking, but it's not something I do. A little bit of pepper goes in there. And you'll notice once again, I'm not adding that. So we steeped off the uh, steak there, Mrs. Spielberg. We steeped off the garlic, you know, we steeped it, you can see, we steeped off the garlic each time. Alexa, stop. At this stage now, what we want to do is actually the cubes of bread. So we've took in, taken some sandwich bread. Now the recipe calls for six, um, feel what? six slices of bread, but feel free if you love bread and you've got nothing against it, feel free. So it's up to you what you want. Remember, you can have a, a big top, a big crust on it, or you can have some, you know, just a, a, a short layer of it. Okay. Donna wants to know why there isn't a mozzarella on the top layer. Uh, I'm just going to add that now, Donna. <laughs> it's, it's coming it's coming through. By Jove, Jiminy Cricket. Okay. So many critics. So, uh, so, well, no, it's not. No, we're family. You know what I love about Sunday? It's almost getting together with your family. Look, I'm tossing them with the... With the, with the um, with the butter, what's been steeped in there. And this is how I'll make croutons. I'll just put these on the tray and let them cook. At this stage, Mrs. Spielberg, I will season these with salt and some pepper. I'm just gonna get that a little bit fine. Um, you always get a pepper mill where you change the size of your pepper. You know, um, I think that's the best way. Now this one, li listen to me when I tell you this, it's important to make sure these are seasoned good. Remember, we uh, it's almost like, you know, a, a beautiful, it's a symphony. You know, food is like um, an orchestra. Things have to come together. And I'm being quite generous, but you know, the, when we cook with this, it's gonna dull a little bit. So you can see, now take one, I, I think this one, Mrs. Spielberg, is actually at eight or nine pieces of bread. Uh, I know you use six in yours, but I used a little bit more in my one. So now we've got it. Basically got your garlic bread on top of that dish, which I, I really like. You know, we've infused it, the bread with that fresh thyme with the garlic. And then we take this off. We always, one, one of the things we always want to do, Mr. Spielberg, yeah. is cook on a tray. Always make sure whenever you're cooking anything, a lasagna or anything in this, always cook on a tray because things have a tendency to bubble over. This should be good because we haven't put a tray. I would say is that if you are going to do that, you might need you're going to need longer time to heat it up. If you find that your cheese hasn't melted, use your thermometer on the side and see if it's warm. If it hasn't melted and it's getting a little bit brown, cover the top with some foil. So sometimes what I'll do is that if I'm baking this and I see that the top's going a little bit brown and it hasn't, just cover that and that will stop these from going too brown and overcooking. Uh, do you have to add the bread topping? No. no. And also, uh, for those who missed it, uh, it's actually thyme in the butter. Uh, some fresh thyme, yeah. Um, if you haven't got thyme, a lot of us, when we're actually serving this, they just slice it. And I find that, you know, just having it straight out and I've had it baked at pan parmesan, um, it's quite boring. You know, I think it's tasty, but I think that adding more flavor to it and more brightness. So one of the things I like to do with this, Mr. Spielberg, is just take some marinara sauce, make sure it's warm, so we've got some that's warm, and then we add in, everybody loves, you know, the sauce. So what we want to do is take some of the marinara sauce, you can see that beautiful bright red, splash it all over the place, onto the, the actually sausages, one second. My dad, ricotta cheese, first of all, ricotta cheese. Ricotta cheese adds, adds creaminess. Next time you're doing your favorite pasta dish, take some ricotta cheese, place it onto the plate, underneath your bowl when you're having pasta, and this really gives it, and what this does is for your diner or for your, for your family when they're coming, this actually gives it, when you think about it, you're cutting through that, 
and that's as it comes through you drag it it's on the spoon and it gives you this beautiful creaminess you know as we go in sometimes when i do gnocchi or i do pastas i'll put some at the bottom of the bowl and then what we'll do you are my inspiration for this yes well thank you uh, I'll, I'll take some of the uh, sauce and remember now now we're having some uh, we've got that tomato sauce which is the brightness for it and then we're just adding that to it and then the pesto um i seen at a grocery store in the italian section they had this small thing of pesto so i always want to try stuff it came from italy it was absolutely dreadful um so always try to make your own pesto or buy a good one you can see here we've got the cheese the pine nuts and the oil if you're allergic to um if you're allergic to pine nuts just don't use them in there but this really now this adds i think this is a game changer just by adding the fresh pesto so if you look we've built up a lot of flavor on that plate you know and then take some reggiana parmesan we can see this is over uh this this reggiana parmesan is over 12 months old this is about i'd say this could be 84 months old by the crystallization and then adding some reggiana parmesan so before we've even started we've got ourselves a fabulous plate for the actual egg it's like pan. a bed it is like a bed yeah well i mean there's an old saying which was life is short so if it is short we want to make sure every meal we have is tasty you mm -hmm. know um, and so what we want to do now is cut the eggplant parmesan I'm sorry for going a little bit over today ladies and gentlemen I know a lot of people said they'd like the show to be 45 minutes um, so you know, be careful what you wish for <laughs> but sometimes recipes do have a tendency to do that um, so you can see now that we've got the eggplant, we've cut the corner. You always want to let this settle for about 15 minutes. And then um, slice, it's like the first slice of pie. It's always a bit of a rascal to get out. But I promise that, you know, once you get past that first slice, you should be good. I've got a little bit of a tough one. He's hanging on there to, his, uh, to the side a little bit. But by oiling that pan, you can see now that we've got the layers. So if we look at the layers, not the prettiest presentation, I'm not going to tell lies, you know, um, but this is at home, you know, this is for people at home and rather a generous portion indeed. Do they but, make this at Prego? Uh, at Prego, we do do, um, we do a version of eggplant parmesan. This is not the recipe from Prego. Uh, I miss Prego. I miss, I miss Prego too. Of Prego. Uh, I actually, I miss all my team members, you know, I'm blessed because get to work with the culinary team and I get oh, it's 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 just come out it's warm it's like oozing but all the flavors are there um thank you for tuning in thank you for you know I get messages all the time from people I miss seeing you the guests and I know at the moment we've just got to stay together every Sunday until we're back on the ocean you know you'll get to meet Mrs Spielberg in person but thanks for us making Mrs. Spielberg's recipe, which was good. Talking about recipes, Mrs. Spielberg, next week we're going to take this machine. What is that? This machine, so if you want to join in next week, go along to your gourmet kitchen store or go along to um, your favorite online shopping website. These are about 12 to 15 dollars. This is next week, we're going to be making schnitzel. So I'm going to teach you how to make schnitzel and quite possibly the best goulash you've ever tasted. We're making a 